Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to the shop. It is a hot July day. I've got both doors open, trying to get a little bit of a airflow in here. And hopefully that natural light isn't blowing out the camera. So I've got a Brian Block job today. Local farmer brought it in. So we'll go over to the workbench and I'll show you what we got to work with. But before we do that, if you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're not always a subscriber, I'd appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Well, you guys are looking at a bush hog. I guess you'd call it an attachment. So over here, this is the head that sits on the mower deck itself. This is the uh, PTO driven shaft that's coming from the tractor. And of course, this here mounts here, and then you've got two blades attached to it under the deck. And that's what mows the field or the grass or whatever you're cutting. Well, let's see if I can get the camera in here. So this is a 12 spline tapered shaft. And I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. I have to move it in closer, but as you can see, the splines are all worn out here. So what had happened is this is a new uh, sleeve we got for it, but she should slide on there and be nice and tight and you know, life is good. Held on with this uh, castle nut. And of course they've got a uh, hole through it so they can run a cotter pin. Well, they had it adjusted so far up that uh, you know, it wasn't holding it, so this thing slid down, which enabled this whole thing to slide down. And then it did this, slopped around. You know, you got all that torque from the tractor, and eventually it just wore those splines out. Farmer's trying to get a few more years out of this unit. You know, the shaft is okay, but at some point he probably should replace the shaft typical farmer let's just put a band-aid on it right <laughs> so the job is fairly simple what we're going to, have to do is you know bore this out so we can get a uh, looks like they all they did is a press fit on this because I don't see any weld and I don't see any places where they you know put any pins or screws um, you know I don't have any liquid nitrogen here and it's not worth buying the setup just to do this one job because that would be a really tight press fit I'm assuming they did on this <clears throat> So we'll just do uh, a couple thou, I guess, the best we can. And then I can also run a weld bead around it to keep it from going anywhere. So fairly simple job. I'll get this over on the mill, get it set up, and we'll start uh, cleaning it up. And uh, I'll get this measured up and see where we need to be. So let's get it. Don't know how well the lighting will be. Hopefully you guys can see this pretty good. So I took this over to the parts washer, just cleaned it up. And looking at it, when they put uh, you know, this spline sleeve into this uh, main area here, they didn't put it in straight. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's off, if you notice. I mean, not bad, but... Uh, uh, you know, about three eighths there, and then it's like half there. So, I mean, they're off a smidgen. So I think what I want to do, I want to try to get about in the center where it should be. So I've been debating the plan of attack. Obviously, if we drill this out, the drill is just going to fall this hole, which is off. So I think what I want to do is put it in the abandy mill, take a milling uh, end mill, like a hat one and a half inch and try to obviously clean the bore up and then kind of get it back to where we need to be we won't be taking out much just this outer part here so i think we'll be okay and then once we get a nice clean bore about where we want it then we'll put it, take it over and put it in the accelerator turret mill and then we can start boring it so i think that is going to be the plan of attack so let me get this thing set up over there and uh we'll get some milling action so we are set up over here at the Abandy Mill. Let's see if I can do this handheld. So we'll level this way, we'll level this way. And take her over here. 
Yes, let's see, zeros are good. Come over here and we are, I can get you in some white. <laughs> zero so this is the accuracy we need for this thing nothing special because you know the more accurate the more costly it is and he doesn't uh, want to pay for that he just wants to get this bush hog back up and running oh i just used a gauge pin and a uh, er32 collet add a little more light and then all i'm doing here get lined up is i'm just taking my rule and doing this and doing that and I moved it over just a smidgen because this thing obviously was not centered so I'm going to try to correct it just a little bit not too much as you can see you get a look at it, what it looks like so I've got this nice big fat uh, one and a half inch uh, six flute rougher that should go just fine go down there and clean that hole up so let me get it mounted and we'll get uh, to chewing some chips Yep, not sure if you're going to be able to see much since we're taking out at the bottom of the taper the hole there, but I can feel the cutter just kind of kissing it as I raise the knee. Uh, and that sharpie mark on the cutter is the depth we need to go, so you might be able to hear it now. Spinning 120 RPMs. I'm just raising the knee up slowly. Let the cutter do its thing. Chips will fall to the bottom, so you won't see anything coming up. Stepped up to a one and three quarter. Run her back down and Hopefully the hole will be nice and clean and we'll get over there and start uh, boring it out. The more material we can move with, remove with a drill or an end mill, the better off you are than sitting there taking small bites of the boring bar that's going to be at least two inches long, you know. See how it goes dry. I may have to add some Miss coolant here. So far it's chewing it nicely. Alrighty, we just broke through, so we should have a nice one and three quarter inch hole to work off of. Now, obviously, you guys can do it differently. This is the way I chose. I mean, heck, technically I could sling this on my lathe if I had a 24 inch face plate to hold it. <laughs> Cause you could just bolt her down, right? <clears throat> but I don't have a face plate that big enough. And I did it over here to get this hole, you know, nice and true so we can start it off with. Um, because, you know, grabbing a one and a half inch and a one and three quarter inch cutter, you know, running it in an end mill holder, with uh, you know, an R8 holding onto it, all you got is that small little taper, right? You don't have much, so at least with a 40, you know, you got a lot more taper surface, plus you got two dogs to drive it. So that's why we're basically doing the roughing over here, and then we'll do the final bore over at the milling machine. So let's get this out and uh, get it set up to bore. So not too exciting, but we are set up here. I've just been boring away. And like the old uh, saying goes, don't want to uh, bore you with a bunch of boring. But uh, so just chewing out the bore a little bit at a time. Well, as you can see, I have swapped my two inch boring head for the three inch one because I had maxed out on the two inch one and realized I didn't have a long enough uh, three quarter inch boring bar to work with that head. I just had a shorty. So I had to wait a few days, went on the internet, hit up uh, old, all industrial, 
We've got a nice, I mean, it's import set, but it's still a nice set with nice triangular inserts. So, mailman just dropped that off. So, we are uh, back to boring. And while I was at it, I figured I'd go ahead and grab a nice half inch size for the two inch boring head. But uh, we're about to. Uh, Two uh, inches and a half, 500 thou. And we gotta take her out to two inches, uh, a little over 900. So I'm just chewing out about 15 thou depth of cut at a time. That seems to be the sweet spot. So just figured I'd give you a progress report. I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of the boring. I may uh, get a little footage towards the end, but uh, just thought I'd bring you up to date on where I'm at. Well, hopefully this is the last pass. We're going to be just a smidgen under. And then what I'll do is I'll put that uh, sleeve that we're pressing in in the lathe and I'll just take it down. I've got so much tool deflection from moving out from the center of the spindle, even using a three-quarter inch boring bar that I'm still not getting consistent readings when I dial it in. So. Better be uh, safe than sorry, right? Okay, just finished up. Um, surface finish isn't the greatest, but oh well, nobody's gonna see it. And you m might have been questioning and say, hey Tom, why don't you just try to press this thing out and put the new one in? Well, as you can see, the old one, the OD is larger than the new one. So if I pressed this out, we'd had a huge hole. So that wouldn't have worked, even if my 20 ton press could have got this thing out. So that's why I had to bore it out. But it was probably, I don't know, pretty painful, several hours, just taking small bites. You know, this would have been an ideal job to set up in a horizontal boring mill, because you could have had a nice rigid boring bar, and could have gone in there with a piece of high speed steel and just chewed it out pretty quick and uh, pretty consistent. So, all right, well, let me get this out and, um, you know, break a couple edges and then um, get this thing set up in the press. Okay, we are all set up here at the press. It is the next day I put the sleeve in my deep freezer, which is about a negative five degrees Fahrenheit. So hopefully that should help uh, make this thing go in easier. So let me go up to the house, go grab that, and uh, we'll drive this thing home. Let's get this thing done. Brought it down in the cooler, got it wrapped up. Nice and cold. Ah, come on, baby, get out of my glove here. There you go, look at that thing. It's about 80 degrees here right now, so it'll suck it out pretty quick. I'll move my hand in a second because I know I'm probably in the way. underneath her oh yeah that freezer shrank it just enough it's going in good don't have to fight it I'm happy oh, she's stiffening up come on baby oh come on we're almost there Mmm. Ah. I think that's all she's gonna give me. Yep. Whew. Well, crap. She's a little higher than I like. But 
that's all my press is gonna give her. She's starting to bend a little bit. That's 20 tons. I'm glad I didn't shoot for a three thou. Hmm. shy in the bottom but you know I thought about heating it but I figured the heat gonna pull that cold out of that so fast so um that'd be uh, counterproductive so she kind of gonna be is what it is I think Well, I am glad I shrunk it. Jeez. I mean, I know the standard is usually about, uh, you know, one inch for every thou press fit. So technically this is 2.9 inches. We should have done a three thou press fit, but I was worried we'd have trouble. Since we have to go two inches down, so I just only did two thou press fit. And, you, and you, as you can see, we still struggled even freezing this thing but she goes on there good i don't think it's going to be an issue it's just going to be sitting down about a quarter of an inch lower i don't think that'll affect cutting fields so uh, so now what we need to do is i got to make a uh, a washer for this thing the castle nut and then also uh, I think just to make sure this thing doesn't move on me thinking about maybe putting a couple uh, you know pin in this thing <clears throat> Dutch pins or uh, scotch pins as some people call them so I think that's probably going to be the route to go because it's a lot of inertia so a little bit of a you know a safety thing more than anything else and then after all that's done I guess I'll try to uh, balance this blade or yeah, bracket as best I can so we are on the home stretch now we need to make a, uh, a washer just something you know quick down and dirty got uh, just two inch diameter 10 18 hot rolled obviously I mean, we're gonna face it I'm gonna uh, drill it out to 61 64 and then part it at about uh, an eighth of an inch thick or 125 thou. And we'll give it a test fit. And if I need to tweak it a little bit, then I'll probably just put it on the surface grinder and you know, take off a few thou here and there so we can just make sure we get the right depth on that castle nut. So like I said, we're just gonna knock this out pretty quick. about hot rolled I'm sure do have a lot of run out because that thing ain't round set my zero over here say we break a couple edges
let's uh, part this thing off. Like I said, this thickness is not precise. Anything close to that would be fine. I mean, we're making a washer, right? Set my dial over here. Just come in and say 100, 25,000. Bingo. All righty. Sweet sound. Alright. Done. Have everything set up in the mill to go ahead and cut a couple keys. So I've got uh, one inch long quarter inch diameter dowel pins except they're measuring 249 so i've got a quarter inch four fluid end mill now i'm just going to run her down till i've got uh, you know a nice flat spot and then we'll drill it out uh, undersized i do have a 249 reamer but i don't have a 248 so we'll see how this ends up fitting if it's uh you know, snug or if we're going to maybe need to do some Loctite or even a little spot weld on top just to make sure she doesn't go anywhere. We'll see. So let me uh, get a flat spot. A little anchor lube on there. Hopefully, that'll help it out. It's not supported right there, so I didn't like it. Like getting that hole. Slower down. Yeah, let's see what kind of fit we got. Alrighty, she's gonna be nice down there, looks like. Just a little bit of a burr, but I think I think we'll probably drive home. Nice, that works. Cool. Let me do the other side off camera. All righty, let's put the pins in. I think what I'm gonna just do is a dab of Loctite. Since these are hardened dowel pins, I don't really want to weld on them. And I don't know if I'm 
if there's going to be much room for this green stuff or not, but we'll put it on there. If it squeezes it out, it squeezes it out, you know. So, let's see if we can hammer this thing where you guys are at. Hang on. I think she's there. Oh yeah, she is there and ain't going nowhere. All right. So lastly, I'm gonna attempt to try to balance this thing, give it the best shot I can, because I don't know how well his blades are balanced, but you know, give it a fighting chance, right? There, I ain't going nowhere. All right. Well, if it wasn't tapered, it would be a little bit easier. I don't have one of those Christmas trees where I could just plop it down, you know? Usually this works pretty good, but because it's tapered, it's not wanting to rotate smoothly, but it doesn't seem to have a real heavy end. It just kind of wants to hang out. This diameter is about one and a half, so it's not getting in in between the splines preventing it from moving so I think we're just gonna leave it as is well, all right guys it is done I'm gonna call the customer and uh, let him know he can come pick it up so a little bit challenging on uh, boring it I wish I had a horizontal boring mill that would have knocked it out I also wish uh, I had a faceplate big enough we could have turned this on uh, the new to me big jet lay that would have been a perfect job for it we could have bored this out in half the time it took me to do it on the mill since there's a lot of real estate to take out but we got it done in the end and i wish i could have drove this down just a little bit farther but uh you know that was what i was worried about so i'm glad i at least froze it because i imagine we probably would have been halfway down and it would have just whoosh. so gave me a fighting chance you know back and forth on whether trying to heat this you know if i get enough expansion or not if i heated that and then had this cold i imagine the heat would just suck this out pretty quick especially since uh, i don't have a pneumatic press you know i gotta pump it by the handle and it takes a little bit longer but uh i don't think this height's going to make a difference really you know it's you're cutting grass so i think we're good so hey hope you guys enjoyed it and give me a thumbs up leave comments and we'll catch you on next video see ya